All right, how's everybody doing out there in Mathematic Land? In today's video, Mr. Muscarello is going to work with you and show you how to graph quadratics in standard form. Now, standard form quadratics do take this form that is shown here at the bottom of your screen. f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So you've got to recognize the form, and then I will show you exactly how to graph it. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is find the AOS. And that stands for, of course, the axis of symmetry. To find the axis of symmetry, you're just going to simply use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. And make sure you write x equals, because if you don't write x equals, that means no point for you for the AOS, because it is a line. The axis of symmetry is a line that divides a parabola in half, because a parabola is symmetrical. The next thing that we're going to do is find the vertex. Whatever the answer was that we got from the axis of symmetry, we're going to plug that value in for every single x that is in our equation. The answer that we get will be the y-coordinate of the vertex. To find the y-intercept, we are always going to use the form 0, comma c. So whatever number is sitting in the c spot, that is going to be your y-intercept. So let's take a look at and see kind of what we've got going on here in as far as finding the table of values. Now, finding a table of values is going to be very, very similar to what we've already kind of worked with uh, before. So normally, uh, we would have, say we have this equation here, y equals just x squared plus 2x minus 5. So my a value, so a would be 1, b would be 2, and my c value would be 5, or negative 5. Now, this tells me two things. My a value tells me that my parabola is going to open up. So generally, it's going to look like that. It's going to be a big old smiley face. So yeah, parabola opening up uh, there. Now, the other thing that the a value is going to tell me is that my movement pattern, 1, 2, 3, remember, that's always my horizontal movement. I'm always going to move left and right from where? From the vertex. And then my squares of each one of these numbers, 1, 2, and 3, square 1, you get 1. Square 2, you get 4. Square 3, you get 9. So from the vertex, you'd go over 1 and up 1, over 1, 2, and up 4, and over 3, and up 9. So we're always going to use that movement pattern. And remember, the AOS is what divides our parabola in half to make it symmetrical. So we would have the same pattern on each side of the AOS. Now, however, if, say, my parabola equation was y equals negative 2x squared plus 3x minus 4. My a value in this case is negative 2. I'm not going to worry about the b and the c values, but my a value is negative 2, which means my parabola is going to open down. So along that axis of symmetry, wherever that is, instead of using the normal movement pattern of 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 9, I've got to take all of these 1, 4, 9 numbers and multiply them by my a value. So 1 times negative 2 is going to be negative 2. 4 times negative 2 will be negative 8. And 9 times negative 2 will be 18. So from the vertex, I'd go over 1, but then down 2. Then I'd go over 2, but then all the way down 8 to come up with my next point. And of course, I'd do the same thing moving to the left, because our parabola is symmetrical. So you'll see that a little bit more when we take a look at examples. One of the other things we're going to take a look at is finding the increasing and decreasing intervals. Now, this is going to be very similar to what we've kind of worked with in the past. Now, we could have a parabola that opens up. That's one way a parabola could open. Or we could have a parabola that opens down. Now, both of these, of course, would have this uh, axis of symmetry in the middle. And say my axis of symmetry is 4, because 4 is the cosmic number. Now. I'm going to go from negative infinity to 4. That's going to be one of my intervals, and the other one is going to be from 4 to infinity. Now, which side is increasing and which side is decreasing depends on which way your parabola opens. If it opens up, the side on the left is going to be the decreasing side. The side on the right will be the increasing side. And if you think about that, slope, because increasing and decreasing intervals, they really just have to do with slope. Increasing has to do with a positive slope. And decreasing has to do with a negative slope, so that would be like that. So if I took a look at the uh, slope on this side, see how that slope is kind of 
positive, so that's why this side is increasing. Now, likewise, if my parabola were opening down, so if my parabola is opening down, then this piece right here between negative infinity and 4, that's coming in, that's going to have a positive slope, so that is going to be the increasing side, whereas on the other side going down on the right-hand side of the vertex, that will be my decreasing side. So always think about slope when you're looking for the intervals of increasing or decreasing. And that AOS value, the x-coordinate of your vertex, those are going to be the numbers that sit right in here every single time. All right, so that will be the, move, the pattern for finding increasing, decreasing intervals. Now, let's take a look at our first example. So here in example number one, we've got the equation y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. So the first thing I want you to do is identify what the a value is, the b value is, and the c value. So the a value is what is sitting in front of x squared. Well, there's no number there, so we're going to know that that number is 1. The b value is really easy to see. That's negative 2, and the c value, of course, is negative 3. So 1, negative 2, and negative 3 are my abc values, respectively. Now, remember, the c value gives me what? the y-intercept. So that is going to be the very quickest, easiest thing to find. So 0, negative 3, because remember it's always 0, comma, and then the c value. That will be my y-intercept. So I'm going to go to my graph, and I'm going to go down. Since this will fit on my graph, I'm going to plot that point right there, 0, negative 3, and that will be my y-intercept. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now the next thing I'm going to do, so first I write down the ABC, second I can go ahead and identify the Y-intercept, and then the third thing I'm going to do is find my AOS, my axis of symmetry. Now in the beginning, you might need to write down the formula, so if you do, just remember it's negative B over 2A. Now I have to really take my time. Some people can do this part in their head. Negative, negative 2, the opposite of negative 2, so negative, negative b, and then 2a, so 2, and my a value is 1, so 2 times 1. This step right here, negative, negative 2, some people will be able to do that in their head and just kind of come up with 2 in the numerator, and then of course 2 times 1 in the denominator is 2. When I reduce that, I get 1. So that means my axis is symmetry, so I'm going to go over here to 1, and I'm going to put a dash line right down there. Boom, boom, so x equals one, that's going to be my axis of symmetry, my AOS. Now what's really cool about that is now I'm going to use that number to help me find my vertex. So I know it's one comma some number, and now I have to find a number. And how do I find that number? I'm simply going to plug in one anywhere there's an x. So I want you to write it like this, y of one equals, and I'm going to put one in parentheses squared minus two times one, and then minus three. When you clean up your arithmetic, y of one, Careful here, 1 squared is just 1, minus 2 times 1 is 2, and then minus 3 is going to be mi minus 3. So if I have 1, minus 2, minus 3, my total, when I'm done, is going to be negative 4. So my vertex is going to be the point 1, comma, negative 4. So 1, negative 4 is going to be right here on my AOS. If I analyze my A value, remember my A value is going to tell me two things. One, what direction does it open? Since my A value is positive, this is going to open up. The second thing it tells me is my movement pattern. Now, normally my movement pattern is 1, 2, 3, and 1, 4, 9, so my A value is 1, so I don't have to change the 1, 4, 9 at all. It's just going to be that movement pattern. So here is what we would end up graphing with this. So my vertex, I'm going to go over 1, up 1, put a dot. I'm going to go over 1 to the left and up 1, and that's already there, the y-intercept, so that's same care of, thank you very much. Go back to the vertex over 1, 2, and up 1, 2, 3, 4. The hardest thing is making sure you count correctly. And then on the left side of my AOS, I'm going to go over 2 and up 4 again. Now let's see if I can fit a third one on there. Over 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I can fit another one on there. And then likewise, I'm going to fit another one on there. So that is going to be my graph. And so what I'm going to want to do, of course, is with the best job that I can. I'm going to try and go ahead and connect my dots here like that. So make sure you put arrows on the end because your parabola will have arrows on the end. And that is the shape that this parabola will take. Now I've got two other things to do. Uh, and so first let's talk about the increasing decreasing part. The part is on the left side of the AOS. Since that has a slope that's kind of down this way, that kind of negative slope is going to be negative, which means that is going to be the decreasing side. So I'm going to go from negative infinity to my x value in my coordinate. 
my vertex or my AOS number, which is one. And then my increasing side is going to go from one to infinity. So there's my increasing and decreasing intervals for this parabola. And then lastly, what I'm going to do is go ahead and put down my TOV, so my table of values. Uh, so in my table of values, I'm going to have X and Y. And really what I want to do is just take my time and look at the coordinates for each one of my points. I like to start here on the left, so my first coordinate is negative 2 and then 5. And then my next coordinate is going to be at negative 1, 0, then my third coordinate is going to be 0, negative 3, which happened to be my y-intercept. And then my vertex is going to be the coordinate point 1, negative 4. Now, some people will like to put a box around this, maybe put a little V right there so you know like that's your vertex, because you're going to see a pattern here emerge momentarily if you don't already know it. Now, after 1, negative 4, my next point is going to be 2, negative 3, 2, negative 3, and then lastly, I'm going to have the point 3, 0, and my final point, I'm going to squeeze this guy here on the bottom, I'm going to have the point 4, 5. So 4, 5, he's going to be right there. Now notice, each one of these that are out here have the same y coordinate right here, boom, all the way down, they have the same y coordinate, and of course 3, or negative 3 is going to be the same because each one of these values are going to be the same distance from your AOS. That's going to be it for this example. I want you to come back and try example number two here on your own. Uh, I will guide you through that one, but that'll be it for this video. Example two is coming at you in the next video.